Natasha, who's joining us now for this session, as they say, part two, which is, I suppose, a little bit around a few questions and answer sessions. So Dawn, um, Natasha is one, newly joined our team and she's an occupational therapist by background. And she's a couple of key questions she'd like to ask you. So with that, Natasha, I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Hiya, Dawn. I Hi. suppose my first question is, how long have you been in post in terms of implementing the changes? Yeah, well, I suppose um, that's actually kind of an interesting question in terms of I'm actually in post two years, but um, I was redeployed during, voluntarily redeployed during COVID-19 to establish the COVID-19 testing service within Community Healthcare East. Um, and uh, I'm back in post now about uh, nine months at this stage. So really, I would say it's probably a nine months um, I've been directly involved in the project. Um, so it's, I have to say, a huge carryover from the work that I did in the community testing and um, working with a similar team, which was really helpful and maybe helped us to establish um, even foundations and the, the relationships Plus, I've also worked in the area where I now am involved in a leadership role for the last 11 years. So I think part of um, the success is probably being the background in terms of relationships already in place. Very good. And I suppose that leads on to my main question, which is just mm. around creating readiness for change. Mm. Um, and I imagine that what you were saying is that you already had good relationships in place, which is... Mm -hmm really central to that but what else did you have to do in terms of creating readiness for change and what obstacles did, did you come across and how did you overcome those? Yeah well I think um, in terms of creating that readiness for change for me it's about timing it's about um, you know taking the progress and the change implementation at the pace of your stakeholders so you know there was no point in in charging ahead with my own agenda um, and there was times when people would ask you know can we leave this for a couple of weeks and we would leave it and we would come back to it but a really positive piece um, in terms of you know paving the way was around our, our due diligence you know building that relationship with our therapy managers individually and collectively and um, so we had an opportunity to discuss the service and to discuss the challenges and the positivities for each service. And I think that even is an opportunity, you know, to actually have time to understand somebody else's service. And we probably all want to yeah. share good news stories. So that was a really, really positive um, development and in terms of kind of paving the way. Now, having said that, not without its challenges, as I mentioned, nine months kind of really moving forward with the project. But in the middle of that, we had vaccinations. We've had ongoing challenges in terms of COVID restrictions. We couldn't meet face to face. We've had staff in and out of work. You know, there's been huge challenges across the service. So I think just really uh, recognizing that, recognizing the change fatigue, recognizing the tiredness within our colleagues, and sometimes it was even just over a cup of coffee, you know, or, you know, it was a walk at lunchtime. I think a lot of the business got done. So just maybe thinking about different ways to make sure that you meet people where they're at. Um, and that's really been the key. And then coming back to the whole piece around the stakeholder mapping, communication, making sure that everybody is invited, everybody's involved. Um, everybody has their time to discuss their concerns, whether it's frontline clinicians, unidisciplinary, multidisciplinary situation. And um, really, again, kind of harnessing all that um, support, the senior leadership team, you know, driving it forward. So I think definitely it's just about picking your timing and picking your moment. So even we can demonstrate even during the most difficult time, we could move forward with this change implementation as long as people were, were on board and their views were listened to and heard. Thank you. And so I'm really hearing, Natasha, very much what Dawn has talked about, our cultural um, people platform, right? That whole thing of collective leadership, that supportive behaviour, that shared values, that good communication, building the team's capacity, leveraging what you needed to leverage, all those kind of key elements. You've just said them organically, but it's about people at the end of the day and those really good foundational relationships. 